How's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night, end of the weekend, and a new month upon us tomorrow, April 1st tomorrow. It is about 9.39 p.m. here, Sunday night, California time. Latest activity shows a 2.5 in the area of Puerto Rico. Did see some movement out here across the uh, rest of the globe today. First, we're going to cover, well, a lot of, getting a lot of questions about this, whether we're going to be able to see the eclipse or not here on April 8th. We are getting awfully close here to the uh, April 8th time period. Here is the latest weather model here, updated uh, for the current run hour. Still showing quite a bit of consistent cloud cover associated with a subtropical jet here. A lot of moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico as well, creating the uh, unfavorable environment for viewing the eclipse on the April 8th time period. As of right now, uh, almost the entire area out here across the totality line which is in this red dotted line is covered unless you're up here maybe up into the upper portions of new york state it looks like maybe maine as well um but goodness it is not looking favorable for the eclipse here folks we'll continue to watch that each of these model runs are showing consistency in terms of the dynamics out here blue right one would think the white is a cloud cover that's not the case Blue here is going to be 100%. White, in this case, is going to be clear skies, or at least generally clear skies, maybe partly cloudy. But uh, as you can see here, not the best viewing conditions here for the great American eclipse coming up on the 8th. We'll continue to check back on that. All right, as far as earthquake activity, someone mentioned here they were reporting some uh, activity outside of the Wisconsin area. I'm not seeing anything showing up. Doesn't mean that there isn't anything. Uh, just nothing being reported here by the USGS here on this map. The eastern portion of the country out here looks fairly quiet. Uh, typical movement out in Texas. Southern California did see a three-pointer. In fact, a uh, 3.5 coming in here off of the Elsinore Fault in Southern Cal. Uh, was felt uh, by a few folks out there. 13 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Aside from that, generally small microquake activity out across the Southern California area today. Up north here in Northern Cal, pretty quiet. Nothing going on here across the Cascadia subduction zone for now. And a handful of smaller quakes out here generally from this morning across the Cascades. Really nothing major going on there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, I do like to cover that and sometimes I forget. But uh, just a real quick glance here. Looks like earthquake activity is uh, pretty much non-existent out here. Maybe one, two earlier today. Had some windy vents stirring up here, but uh, earthquake activity pretty quiet there across Yellowstone. Into the Gulf of Alaska, one earthquake earlier this afternoon, it looks like. A four-pointer back behind the subduction zone here. That's the plate boundary in the red line. This is where the Pacific Plate Subducts underneath the North American plate here. You got the Aleutian Trench, a big time subduction zone, and of course, a big time player in terms of great earthquakes. Uh, the rest of Alaska up there looks generally uh, typical for microquake movement. Nothing going on here across the western edge here of the Pacific plate. If we look here on the Earthquake 3D globe, most of the movement here confined around Taiwan southward into the Indonesia Islands area. We did see a 5.3 here back across the plate boundary just outside of Papua New Guinea, one of our more recent quakes. Uh, a handful of deep movement quakes and subsequent surface adjustment going on here around Fiji and Tonga area. Uh, still keeping an eye on New Zealand because we're seeing all this activity here bouncing back and forth uh, with, with them basically being right there along the plate boundary, the middle segment. Not a whole lot going on there, at least in terms of uh, reporting. I do want to double check the GeoNet servers and see what's going on here from, from the folks here that uh, monitor the uh, earthquakes down south, way down there. All magnitudes here. Uh, still getting some deeper activity quakes. They're 1.7, 43 kilometers deep. Here's another 134 for a 1.7. Uh, super deep earthquake there off the North Island coast. That's probably associated with the um, Kermadec Trench. And uh, generally just microquake activity it looks like. Really not seeing anything major. But uh, again, keep an eye on it because it is in between these two very active regions here over the last 24 hours. 
All right, uh, further out and about here across the plate boundary. Uh, one earthquake this morning, it looks like eastern Afghanistan. Pretty deep earthquake, but that's very typical for that region out there. The Mediterranean region, twos and threes. Again, very common on any single day out here. The Azores getting a little bit of earthquake activity in the two range. Iceland, well, let's see what's going on across the Iceland area real quick. As we look at the last 12 hours, about 21 earthquakes. Really no uh, major interesting movement. The eruption, I am assuming, is still ongoing here. We'll double check from the live from Iceland.is site. That gives us a, a beautiful view here of at least two active um, craters. Looks like this one here had a collapse earlier. Part of the uh, crater wall collapsed in. But uh, still looking at a decent lava flow. And that's just one of the webcams. The second one here shows a broader view. Well, actually, this one's a little bit more close up. But uh, still seeing at least two active regions here across the Iceland area. Two crater areas. Still seeing some movement there. We'll continue to watch it. Really no major change going on there for now. Uh, space weather activity. Our departing sunspot. Look, we're getting eclipsed right here. The data... Um, the sunspot over here, 3615, is uh, still throwing off M flares. Look at this flare right here. Uh, pretty decent M flare up into the M 3.9 category. Uh, that was away from Earth, so it's possible it could have been a little bit stronger. Again, there's the eclipse going on here. Uh, I believe that's the Earth getting in view, I, or the moon. One of the two, I, I haven't nailed it down yet, I, I keep meaning to, but it's a data blackout that occurs by eclipsing uh, that happens every 24 hours. So I'm guessing it's got to be the uh, the Earth that's uh, getting this uh, view there of the spacecraft that's monitoring this data. But uh, as you can see, data, well, at least not on this one, but uh, you can see the data blackout here every 24 hours, and we're seeing one right now. Uh, there was a little prominence eruption here off the north end. Look at that. Shooting a whole bunch of plasma off there into space well north of the Earth-Sun plane. Um, that's a, a beautiful shot. Let me see if it picked it up here in the, the movie. Let's see. Let's go back here and check it out. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful image. You guys see that up here? Beautiful prominence eruption shooting off some plasma. Again, not directed towards Earth. Active regions over here across the um, the far western limb of the sun. Let's see if we can find that um, M flare that peaked off earlier today. Um, hello? There we go. So back over here. Well, it looks like... Uh, Maybe skipped it. I don't know. But we did have an M-flare. And it came from uh, the far side sunspot there, 3615, which is no longer visible out here. We do have a couple different sunspots out here facing the Earth. But, uh, man, this is not quite. This is not active at all in terms of complexity of those sunspots. Look at them here on the visible disk. Can hardly notice them. Just a little speck or two compared to all the other sunspots we've seen recently. Those are... Really nothing. Um, so the general flare threat has dropped as expected. 99% chance for sea flare. And then we're dropping way less here in the other categories due to, well, not a whole lot of uh, active regions here on the earth facing side. Um, taking a look here at the, is this the most recent one? It does look like the most recent one right here. Uh, this is the earth facing side of the sun. Far western limb over here, there's 3615 that's continuing to pop off M flares, uh, but it's it's gone. It's definitely much further out here. This is about a day behind, it looks like, but um, this is more positioned over here. You can see what it looks like once it goes over here uh, upon this image. Now, back over here, look what's going on here across the eastern limb. We got a huge, giant sunspot coming up here that will be visible uh, in the coming days here, I feel, 
here's another image oh that's the same image this squared area this marked area on this graph is something to watch here uh, it does look like a huge area um, let's see if we can see anything well it's eclipsed right now so we're not going to be able to see it but it does look like on the UV filter here uh, there's a little bit of bright feature going on there across the uh, far eastern limb so we'll continue to watch that we can't see it on the magnetogram image yet it's way out there maybe be able to see it tomorrow morning we'll keep back uh, we'll keep checking back here on that uh, new active region that's going to be coming around the bend so to speak uh, aurora forecast fairly quiet not a whole lot here in the forecast storm prediction center well we got a big time severe weather threat tomorrow folks here for monday tomorrow is not the day to ignore the weather uh, you definitely want to have something uh, that's going to help you out in terms of monitoring the weather tomorrow because uh, a decent five percent chance of tornado probability out here across a large area uh, and that includes some wind and some large hail potential in these areas that you see listed on the map so oklahoma city is in the five percent tulsa st louis uh, louisville springfield missouri anywhere if you're out here even in the green be weather aware for tomorrow uh, the following day things really scoot further to the east here with uh well it's a decent severe weather threat for tuesday as well in these areas so definitely getting into that time of year folks where things um, are very active looking at the gfs model here here's the uh, forecast here for tomorrow it does look like it's going to be somewhat into the uh, early evening hours as well for as far as that uh, tornado threat goes so um you know a lot of people want to go to go to bed after a hard day's work but make sure you keep your weather radio nearby so you can get alerted on any uh, tornado warnings out there in your area now the eighth around the time period where we're looking at the eclipse um, roughly in between the 12 and the 18 Z time period there's already a lot of moisture coming up here uh, it doesn't look like a lot but there's gonna be a lot of cloud cover in the area in general due to that uh, the uh, subtropical jet that's gonna be pulling in here and creating uh, favorable conditions for thunderstorms look at that look at all that moisture just being pulled up there in the Texas the hill country a lot of these areas need and want some rain in fact i was reading here on uh, quite a few social media sites that uh they'd rather have the rain out here in texas instead of the eclipse i i don't blame them you know there's going to be a if this was going to be a spotless day clear day uh they were, they were expecting a huge influx of people from all over the world you know getting ready to see the or wanting to see the eclipse unfortunately folks again it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, let's check out the windy map here. This is the ECMWF model for clouds around the 8th. So if we go 11 o'clock Western time, that would put it at about 1 o'clock Central time here. Look at that massive amount of cloud cover coming in um, and storms getting ready to fire up. Here's that line of activity that kind of stretches uh, surprisingly just across the eclipse area. It's very odd, um, but that is what Mother Nature looks like. Um, that's in store here for that uh, for that day. Monday, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. So, uh, you know, it's a shame, right? It's definitely a shame because I was looking forward to it. Uh, wasn't looking forward to the 24-hour drive out here from California to Texas, but I really wanted to experience it again. Unfortunately, it looks like I may have to wait for the next eclipse, and I don't even know when that's going to be. I don't think it's going to be for quite a while. At least here in the States, I may have to fly somewhere to, to cover it. Um, the COD model, this area, the College of this page right here gfs if we check out the average cloud cover it's basically going to show about the same thing here on the april 8th time period 
which is going to be right about here for the eclipse time. Look at all that cloud cover. Even the, even um, it looks like into Sunday night we start getting a whole bunch of cloud cover. This one's going to be in the white. So cloud cover on this map is going to be in the white. A lot of cloud uh, coverage across the entire area. And roughly about here is going to be the eclipse time. Generally around the uh, totality time. And, and look at that. That's just... Texas is just not looking like a spot to be. Again, maybe way up in New York State up there. But, uh, you know, it's these models have been very consistent. I don't see anything changing. And, with, of course, with each model run here, these will get more accurate and more accurate. And uh, it's obviously due to this subtropical jet. Let me back out here and show you guys what's going on. Um, we're gonna want the, this will work. We wanna check out the upper air dynamics and the jet stream up here. This is um, this is for tomorrow. This is gonna bring some severe weather and there's a low pressure system there in Southern California, that trough. Now, as we put this into motion around the April 8th, Look at that jet coming up out of the north. There's a subtropical jet streaming up here already into Texas for Sunday. It looks like they join together uh, around the April 8th time period and create uh, some decent weather out here. Again, that's this cloud cover and the moisture out there that we're uh, you know, not liking for the eclipse is due to the uh, mainly due to this subtropical jet, but also you know, this northern jet decided to jump in as well. Look at that. Pretty odd, but uh, getting some severe weather potential out here around uh, early next week. Not this coming week, but next week when the eclipse is. And uh, it looks like that's going to, as we put it into motion here, it looks like it's going to stay uh, fairly consistent. Pretty active out here. Got two separate jets, but uh, goodness. It's going to be an interesting spring out here for uh, severe weather. So we'll continue to check back on the cloud cover, folks. Um, not the end of the world, but uh, definitely wanted to see, uh, you know, the eclipse. A lot of people are looking forward to it. We'll continue to cover it on each update. And, you know, we can pretty much assume 100% accuracy come this this Friday. That will give us about two days out. And uh, from there, you can pretty much assume that it's going to be set in stone as far as this cloud cover percentage goes out here across the eclipse line. All right, I'm ready for bed. Tomorrow's Monday. Um, got quite a bit of school stuff I got to get up and do in the morning, so I am going to go to bed. Have a good night, folks. Tomorrow's April Fool's Day, so don't forget that. A lot of people like to pull pranks and tricks on one another, but. Uh, you're not going to get any pranks or tricks from this guy. I try not to do that. I try to stick to the facts and 100% truthful out here. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning for the Monday morning update. Have a good night, folks.